Okay, um, this has been an interesting week. I finally gave Godot 4 um, a try. I've been meaning to do this for months, but honestly, I've been scared uh, of the amount of rework. Uh, so instead, I just procrastinated, um, and I kept explaining to myself that it's probably better to just wait for a more stable version. Uh, or maybe there's a converter that will port everything over for me, you know, um, things like that. But now, having spent a few evenings trying to recreate my project in Godot 4, I actually think I should have started it way earlier because while the engine is not even close to stable, uh, the amount of difference between three and four is way more than I had anticipated. It's, it's not it's not just simple, uh, you know, tweaks to the code. The API has a different approach to some of the critical nodes. Uh, the good thing is it only hurts for the first couple of days. And uh, once you're through the basic differences, uh, you're starting to slowly make progress again and enjoy it. Uh, it's kind of like learning a new engine in a sense, at least for me, because I've not been following Godot Force development too closely. So most of it is new to me. Anyway, um, this is where I left off in Godot 3.4 and my plan for the next couple of episodes will be to recreate this in Godot 4. So in this video I'll tell you about the key things I had to redo to get my player controller uh, and camera systems to work with the new API inside of Godot 4. As for my approach, I decided to start a completely new project in Godot 4 and move my resources piece by piece into this project, uh, which gives me a lot greater uh, control of what's breaking. Uh, initially, I wanted to just open the, the 3.4 project in Godot 4 and address the errors, but that turned out to not be feasible. Uh, I couldn't even open the project uh, in the editor, to be honest with you. The engine would just crash while opening, so I would strip off the pieces which I thought might be problematic, and after like a day of doing that, the editor would finally not crash, but instead it would give me uh, literally thousands of errors, which for the most part were meaningless to me. So I thought I'd just start from scratch and uh, and learn the engine in this way and clean up the project along the way as well. So a win-win situation. And that's what I did. So here are the main differences I had to address to get the controller and camera to work in Godot 4. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's no kinematic body node anymore. There's a character body 3D instead, and it has a property called motion velocity. And you have to use your direction and speed as the value for this property now. So previously you would uh, pass your direction vector multiplied by speed as parameters into move and slide. In Godot 4, move and slide doesn't take parameters. You just call it in your physics process and it will use whatever value you put into the motion velocity uh, property. Um, GLTF skeleton and animations seem to be importing correctly, except the importer looks a little different. Um, a GLTF import doesn't open as a scene, it opens in a whole separate window uh, that looks like this. And it has some extra import options, like you can define the type of looping or extract animation files, meshes, materials. But if you want to use this import as a scene resource, you have to instance it first. So just drag it onto the, a new 3D scene. The animation player works just fine. What didn't work for me is animation tree. Uh, Godot 4 doesn't open Godot 3's animation trees. Uh, they show up as invalid or corrupt. At least they did for me. So what I did instead is saved the uh, tree root property as a resource. And um, I created a new animation tree node in, inside of Godot 4 and loaded up the uh, that tree root and it worked just fine. Next up, um, rigid bodies. Uh, my weapons are all rigid bodies. In 3.4 they would just be sleeping and I would wake them up if they were going to be dropped like when you're swapping weapons. Uh, I've not done weapon swapping yet in uh, in Godot 4, but I did notice that the gun was getting offset from my grip when I was moving, even though it was sleeping. I don't exactly know what has changed, but there's this new property for rigid bodies, which by the way are now called Rigid Dynamic Body 3D, and, uh, and this property is called Freeze, and when it's on, it literally makes your rigid body behave like a static body. So I turned that on and it worked, so I moved on. Uh, next, Intersect Ray. I use a lot of ray casting from the mouse into the world. That is how you know where your bullet target should be in a top-down shooter. Uh, previously I used this code, so I passed the ray parameters and collision mask into the intersect ray function. In Godot 4, intersect ray only accepts one parameter, uh, but you still need to define your ray points and collision mask at minimum. And honestly, this one had me scratching my head for a bit until I found this class, physics ray query parameters 3D. It has properties for from and to and collision mask and some more. 
So just feed this with the values that you want and use it as the parameter for intersect ray. Also, if you want to get world, you have to say get world 3D because get world doesn't exist anymore. Next up, we have tweens. The tweens have changed drastically in Godot 4. They're not even nodes anymore. They're more like data types. Uh, you create one by create node, simply, just like that and then you add methods to it. Uh, there's a whole set of methods that a tween can take. Um, the basic one is the property tweener. So just type tween property and pass in the properties that you want to tween. You don't even have to set ease type or transition type anymore. It will just use the default ones if you don't. But if you do want to specify those, then you have these methods available. Set trans and set ease. Oh, and your tween will just play. You don't have to call start. And you can stack multiple tweens one after the other in your script and they will just play one after the other and if you want them to play in parallel set parallel to true on the next node down in your script and it will play simultaneously with the previous one uh, tweens are a big shift in Godot 4 uh, they've, they've gotten extremely powerful now there's a great tutorial explaining Godot 4 tween class in full I'm gonna link it now and I yeah I suggest you go watch that uh, none of my set us uh, top level calls would work again I didn't know why it turns out that they added a space between between top and level, it uh, annoyed the hell out of me. I was like, why would you do this? There's no value in this tiny change. It just breaks a lot of code. Uh, the other thing which will drive you a little bit nuts is annotations. You have to add an at in front of them. In a majority of cases, this is not a big deal because you would just literally add an at in front of your onReadies and, uh, and exports or even maybe use a converter to do that for you. There's a PR on GitHub that does auto conversion, but it gets a little more tricky when you want to specify ranges and enums for your export variables. The documentation has some gaps on this. So here are a few examples of how we can do it um, in Godot 4. Yield has been replaced with await. I'm only using yield in two ways in the project. One is to create a timer with a timeout signal and the other one is to wait until a tween has completed. So here's how you can um, use await in those two cases. Next thing um, that got me a little frustrated is lerp. I do use lerp to interpolate a vector 3 in a few places and the way I did this in 3.4 is for example I would say uh, vector 3 equals lerp and then I would pass in the parameters from, to and wait into the parentheses. It didn't work for me in Godot 4 for some reason. I don't really know why because I wasn't getting any errors from the engine. Turns out there's a, there's been a subtle but code breaking change. Now you have to attach lerp to the vector that you want to interpolate and just pass in the target uh, vector and wait like this. So these were the main things that got me frustrated. Uh, in retrospect, they seem fairly straightforward, but I did sweat over them, some of them, for some time. And this is not the end of it. This is just the core mechanics. I still have to rebuild gun swapping, reloading, and a few others uh, to get my player fully ported. I will be recreating the full project in Godot 4, and I'm planning to do this incrementally. So do consider subscribing to this channel if you're planning to port your project to Godot 4. And who knows, maybe my my experiences will help you alleviate your transition. My next increment is going to be focused on getting the enemy animations and movement to work in Godot 4 and something's telling me there's, there's going to be challenges on that because it seems that the navigation node and the navigation mesh instance which you would normally use as a child of navigation have been merged into a navigation region node and uh, I don't yet know what that means but I remember getting navigation to work with tiles in 3.4 was a truly traumatic experience. So honestly, I don't even know what to expect in Godot 4. So stay tuned if you're interested. Hope this has been of some help. Leave a like if it was, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Happy holidays.